we're in the crawl space again. This is the house that I'm building for my family. Uh, very nice conditioned crawl space, insulated on the outside. We've got a radon mitigation system. There is the pipe that's coming up uh, below the slab. If you watch the radon test video, which I am uh, linking below and also flashing on the screen right now, that uh, demonstrated to me that although we could hit the pressure, the negative 10 pascals that we wanted everywhere under the slab, it was gonna take a lot more airflow to do that than I wanted. At the end of that video, I said that I would bring you this video, which is about testing where those airflow problems are. Because what we wanna do is just use a little bit of air, just sip under the slab and on the um, multiple slotted drain tiles that we've got on the inside and outside of the footing of the foundation so that we don't have to use a lot of energy to depressurize the slab massively. So what I have right now is instead of the radon test kit that uh, Fantech demonstrated in that video, I have a uh, simple hose that comes with my duct testing kit. So this is the RetroTech system. Now what I could do is hook this hose, which is totally leak free, and I have videos on how to test your snorkel of your duct testing device or your duct blaster for holes because those things do get holes in them. This one's super airtight. Got it plugged right into the PVC and I could use my duct tester. I have the 300 model. Even at wide open configuration, uh, I can only get 800 CFM. And I was gonna run like 300 CFM would get me to 10 pascals. What I wanna do right now is run smoke tests. And I'm gonna wanna go outside in the weather to see where the smoke goes outside. So I'm gonna to wanna to put as much pressurization as possible on this system. And when I say pressurization, I mean suction pressure. Um, so we're gonna be pulling air out of the drain tile. So this will get me 800. That guy is obviously a full blown 5,000 model blower door. If I was to try and fit this really cool bell uh, shaped connection that fits onto the end of this snorkel, to that I could only cover, like if I uncover this, way too big. That's way too much space. I would have to use an obscene amount of tape and it wouldn't work that well. If I was to take the bell off and just connect the hose directly to one of the uh, plugs, that would get me about 270 CFM. That's a back pedal from the duct tester. If I unplugged two of them and covered it with the bell, then that would only get me to 500. So what can I do that's bigger? Well, bing bong. I have another uh, blower door device, which is the Model 3 from Energy Conservatory. This one, if you take off the center plate, when it comes to stock, the default set of range configuration plates uh, comes with A and B. Take off the center plate and you leave B ring installed, the bell fits perfectly. So we just taped it in place and now I have the Minneapolis uh, manometer, which is the 1000 model, digital, hooked up. We have all kinds of interesting hose configurations because of course the different manufacturers, different techniques for wiring up. You are gonna wanna use the uh, tubing assistant which it has in here, so it'll like instruct you on, it asks you what kind of test do you wanna run, what kind of equipment are you using? And then it says, okay, plug this hose into this and this into this. And even though I do this all the time, I still have to use this to really understand and wrap my mind around this. Because essentially what I'm doing is running a duct test outside, but using a blower door, and I don't really care too much what the actual flow is. My goal is to jack up the pressure as much as possible. So with the B ring installed, I can get up to 1200 CFM of flow. I am limited by the size of this snorkel behind me, which is just like a four inch pipe. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this kicked on and we're gonna go outside with smoke and see where this is happening. And here we are outside where I think the main problem is here. Obviously we're sealing the inside on the pango wrap where it's coming up around the uh, slab. That's a two inch mud slab inside. So that's being taken care of. Out here, we're gonna have to wait to see what our uh, improvements as we go are gonna do. Um, but I'll just tell you real quick what the problem is. So as described in the radon video, this is the foundation wall. Bare concrete is covered with a dimpled uh, membrane. That is our drainage plane. And so the dimple mat is called platen. It's the same system as form a drain, which is the slotted drain tile that's at the base of this entire wall. The outer and inner drain tiles are connected together at five points around the foundation. 
And so since we're sucking on the sub slab, which is sucking on the inside of the slotted drain tile, which is then sucking on the outside drain tile, that is buried inside of a burrito of gravel. And the whole purpose of the gravel is to make sure that air is allowed to flow through there because we want to suck everywhere equally. So we've got gravel all over the place down here. And what I think is happening is that the air is able to come down through this slot where I'm sticking my hand right now. So what we have now is tools are our friend. By the way, all the tools that you're seeing in this video, uh, I got from True Tech Tools. They care about tools, so please do get your tools there and not from Amazon or something like that. This is something that they showed me, uh, <laughs> which is a great alternative to the Dragon Puffer that many of you might use that looks like a toy. It's a big blue, um, silly looking thing that gets your hands all sticky and slimy. Also a great alternative to titanium tetrachloride, which is the really dangerous stuff for electronics. Don't store it near electronics. Big red tube that has smoke that comes out of it. That smoke is um, hydrochloric acid when it hits air. So not really nice stuff. This is just simple glycol. So it's got a light built into it, which is kind of neat. And you just warm it up. It's basically a theatrical fogger, but just for your hand. It's called the Cirrus from True Tech Tools. And we want to just puff down here and see if it's getting drawn in. Even though I've got wind out here, I can see pretty clearly that it is being sucked on from below. Now, the other thing that I'm worried about is that it's maybe coming through the rock wool insulation, which is the comfort board on the outside of the foundation wall here through the geotextile. Smoking this, nothing. It doesn't look like it's going through that at all. It's all through that back area. So question now is, what do we do about it? The plan to clad this foundation wall insulation, and by the way, no one has a really good way to do this yet. We've been poking around the interweb and uh, found out that people are just as flummoxed as we are about how to clad this um, exterior insulation. We don't need to protect it, we just need to hide it because it doesn't look great with, with this geotextile over it. It's black at least. Plan is flashing, aluminum flashing that's going to be three inches and then uh, go up the wall inch and a half. We're going to seal that with this same stuff. This is a Tremco Demonic 100 sealant. That will take care of this uh, air pathway and also take care of any water that would find its way past our cladding, past our rain screen, past the two inches of comfort board that's on the outside of this and hit the force field itself would be able to run down and hit this flashing. It also is going to serve as a termite barrier. If termites go inside and then come up, they won't be able to get past this thing. And then what we're going to do from the front here is hang from the back side of it FRP, which is fiberglass reinforced plastic. I've looked into metal. I've looked into manufactured stone veneer. Um, it's either too heavy or it's too thick or it's going to crack if it's in the case of stucco we looked into at one point. This FRP is not the most beautiful product ever. They probably will improve it in the next couple of years, but um, it's waterproof. Nobody's tested it underground, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. Boats being made out of fiberglass as well. Anyway, it would be able to go down uh, subgrade a little bit. So we're going to use the dirt to just pack it up against the, the wall, and then it will be hung from this top lip of the metal flashing, the Z flashing that's going to be along the top here. If we seal the top layer as well, that the uh, top seam between the FRP and the Z flashing, then we've essentially created a barrier to that airflow down into that. Air would have to go down, get behind the FRP, come all the way up, and then go down here. So I don't think that we need to worry about ripping this all out and sealing behind that platen at the very top because of what we're about to do. I was not going to do that technique back here where it's going to be hidden under a deck. This is the closest place to that uh, radon vent. And so if I was to air seal everything else around the house, but not do this because I'm not worried about making this look nice because it's under a deck, that would actually defeat my performance goal of having the radon fan suck as little as possible actual air in order to create its pressure. So I need to actually now put the flashing the whole way around the house, even under the deck where no one's ever going to see it. And I need to put the FRP everywhere around the house, even under the deck where no one's going to see it. So this is how you determine how to make choices and how to value engineer your build. Like, should I spend money on this or should I spend money on that? Test it. 
First you model it in the energy modeling software, the load calculation software, and then you test it with the actual tools. So tools are the hero of the story today. Very happy to know for a fact that I am spending money in the right places. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, please do comment and like if you have anything else to say or any other techniques that you'd like to see on this channel. And make sure that you're subscribed as well. Make sure that you're watching the rest of this build because there's crazy stuff happening and will continue to happen until we move in here. Thanks very much. Tune in next time.